Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. So, just a little update video here. Uh, got a lot of shit going on. I was uh, away for uh, two, well, two of the last two weeks, I didn't say. First, I went to Greenville for a few days here in South Carolina. Then I was up in the D.C. area for a wedding, and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, I met up with Mr. Greeno, the one and only. And I have some uh, VCLT to show, too. Um, first of all, a couple things. First of all, I'm playing... Uh, this uh, weather report record, which is kind of tripping me out, but I'm really enjoying this. I actually got this here in town a few weeks ago, kind of because of Lionel Rich, who's been talking about the fusion, and between that guy and Grown Man Record Night, you know, the Grown Man Record Night guys, they play a lot of shit records, if you ask me, but their hearts are in the right place, and they've done a fair bit towards running me over to its fusion, but there are a few specific records that Vinyl Rich showed, and I was like, shit, man, okay, I've got to fucking do it, so... I actually am really digging this record a lot, and I'm kind of going there, but like, I'm finding with uh, Fusion, it's sort of like anal sex, like I can't go too fast or else I don't enjoy it, so i um, kind of been expanding a little bit with time and trading it slow and sort of branching out a little bit more and getting another one another one rather than trying to just immerse myself, because I find if I try to immerse myself in that shit, it's just fucking terrible, I fucking hate it. So, um... Alright, so uh, so today's record batch, it's pretty much just a mix of everything. I was going to like sort it out and start going through it, but I just got too fucking complicated. So it's pretty much all metal and jazz and maybe two other things in here, I think. So, so first of all, as I mentioned though, I was in the D.C. area and went and uh, visited someone. I got some very special VCLT, which I'm fucking thirsty for right now, and that is a fucking... Brownie caramel cream root beer. Now, I think I did this one once before, like a long time ago, but this shit is not easy to find. It was really thoughtful of that cat to bust this shit out for me, so I don't have a big swill of it. I also got a couple old Dominion root beers from him, which I did, do remember doing. That's one of my favorites. It's fucking fantastic, and it's really hard to find here. I've only seen it like once, and he was like, Yeah, man, we just get the shit, so. This is so good. You really taste the caramel in here. I'm just noticing it fucking says contains milk. Like, you know, caramel is basically just butter and sugar, right? I would assume, wouldn't assume that any of that shit would be real in something like this, but apparently it's real enough that they have to say contains milk on the side in case you're like lactose intolerant or some shit. Fucking with the camera, man. All the settings are all jacked here, so we'll see if this video even comes out, but it probably will, although I should probably turn that down. Fuck. Okay, we'll see. So there we go, and then here's the other thing that's very special from Greenland. You may think I'm fucking around, but I'm actually totally not. Okay? Because, like, it's not records, you know what I mean? But, like, I have records, Greeno has records, it's kind of hard. Like, I'm gonna try to find a record for Greeno. It's like, yeah, there's shit I could luck into that might turn up, but that's luck of the draw, you know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, okay, I'm gonna go up there, so I have to find some for Greeno now, so let me get him a fucking copy of, I don't know, Metal Health by Quiet Riot. I mean, what's the fucking point in that? It's the same reciprocating. But this is something he hooked up with that I cannot get. And this, I don't know if you can see this, these are fucking special peppers. These are special sweet peppers from West Virginia. Shit, man, you don't see that at all. Oliverio, which is like in the special sauce. This is, I want to say Clarksburg. Yeah, Clarksburg, West Virginia. Same place, these pepperoni rolls that he hooked me up with, too. Excuse me, but I took all those down. So, um... Yeah, I'm like fucking sampling the local delicacies. One thing I learned is that this shit, you fucking fry up some sausages, put them in the slow cooker with this stuff, and leave them in there for like a day. Serve them on some toasted rolls with some cheese. It's fucking sublime, man. That's what I call a fucking meal, man. Like, I wasn't even hungry. I was like, well, I still need to eat this shit because I was fucking dying, so. Alright, so that was awesome. And, um, hey, one other little thing about Green, I think you may not have noticed these little things. There's an expression he used that I didn't pick up on until I was actually hanging out with him in person. And that's when he likes a record or isn't anything bad to say about a record, but it's not quite the right thing, he says there's something missing. And I just think that's dead on. Like, maybe he said it in the videos like a hundred times and I just never caught on to it. But like, don't be surprised if you hear me picking that up because I just think that's like a fucking perfect expression for some of the records where like, 
I can't explain why this isn't a great record. It kind of has all the ingredients, but there's something missing, you know? So, you got one more housekeeping thing, actually. That's that I wore this shirt to salute the nasty metal dude. Because uh, we're coming off the end of U.S. Power Metal Month, and uh, he wore this uh, sh one of these shirts in his fucking uh, Top 15 EPs video, which was a fantastic video, and he's pretty much right on just about all of them. I don't, I'm not as big an Agent Steel fan as that cat is, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm not going to say he's wrong. I'm just going to say I'm not there. So, anyway, all right, on to the records, because fucking, oh, I don't even have a timer on this thing. I was going to try and check how long it's going, but it's luck of the draw. I know it's about 20 minutes from the record. Um, ends. So right off this one, um, yeah, this is a jazz one. And you know something? It's funny. It's ECM. I saw an ECM record in Greenville. It was ECM 1001. I was like, it's the fucking first ECM record. Man. I really gotta grab this. And it's Mel Waldron, and I like Mel Waldron. But I was looking at it, I was like, here's the thing though. It's a trio record. And like, I like trio records, but I have a lot of fucking trio records. Like piano bass drums. I'm kind of not really looking to stop my collection with more trio records. Let's hear something really special about them. Um, and then, uh, and Mel Waldron, man. Mel Waldron, I like Mel Waldron, but he played on so many records. He did so much shit over so many years. I'm like, well, do I really need another fucking Mel Waldron record just because it's an early ECM? So it's like, well, it's ECM. So I kind of want it on principle, just because it's an early one, but it's Mel Waldron, it's fucking trio record, I'd have a 25 bucks, so I'm like, fuck it. This one, though, this is an ECM record that I bought deliberately, and given all the shit that I've talked about ECM, I want to call this one out, because I kind of invited people to uh, try and turn me on to some ECM shit, and oh, Ben Costello, I really want to give you the prize for this, but I just can't do it in good conscience, because... I don't think we're on the same page as far as our taste there goes. But and Mr. Anthony Camponi recommended this one. And this is a fucking good record, man. It's like cool free jazz shit. It's like Conference of the Birds. And it really kind of has that vibe going. It kind of reminds me in spirit of a lot of the shit that Messian was doing in his compositions. Although, you know, the effect of it is... Well, the effect of it's similar. The sound of it is actually really different. So I guess what I'm trying to say. But um, it's a really cool record, man. 1972... It's recorded, and yeah, this is on ECM, so here we go. I am saying good things without reservation about an ECM record right now. So this is something you probably won't see very often. Usually I'm going to be saying, fuck man, they suckered me again, god damn it. Um, here's another one. This one looked really cool. This one I got in D.C. at the same shop. It's a really good shop, man. I can't tell you where it is, though, because it's one of Greeno's spots. I can't give that shit away. Um, yeah, Chico Hamilton. I like Chico Hamilton. I have a record of his called Drum Fusion. I think it's fucking fantastic. Uh, there are a lot of records out there, and a lot of them aren't that tough to find. So I don't have a lot, because they kind of tend to get second-tiered to the shit that where I go, fuck, I need to grab this now. But I hadn't seen this one before. It just looked fucking cool, man. So, um, this is on Solid State, actually, which is another reason I grabbed this, because you don't see these around a whole lot. I mean, yeah, they turn up, but... It's not like, you know, you see solid states all over the place, like like you see ECM, you know? Uh, so, here we go. And what's the year on this? I don't even know. Here's my beef with this record. I like the vibe of this. I like the groove of it. And I like um, the feel of it. But it's really heavy on the violin. And it's funny, because I used to hate jazz vibes, and then I, they won me over. Then I hated jazz guitar, and I got one over. I'm still not there with jazz violin, man. Um... I can handle it in moderation. I like it on Free Action by Wolfgang Downer. I can handle it on uh, Hot Rats by Frank Zappa. I can kind of handle it here and there, but this one's just a little bit too much. It's funny, too, because there's kind of a lot of violin in the records I'm showing here, and most of them are just fine, but that was just a little bit heavily, so I think I just need a little more time to assimilate it. Um, this one's pure grown man record, and I'm almost embarrassed to show this, but in the interest of honesty, I will. It's a fucking Billy Cobham record. Again, corny-ass fusion record, really. But first of all, he's a hell of a drummer, and second of all, man, I like this record. You know, it's kind of indefensible as far as, like, it has some pop moves going on. Not like he would do later on. It's really not that bad. This is definitely more along the lines of Total Eclipse or Spectrum. It's no cornier than those, but it's, uh... 
you know, the rock aspect of the jazz rock thing, fusion, is really kind of more of a pop thing a lot of the time, and you can kind of hear that. It's not like, it doesn't sound like you're listening to Deep Purple, you know? So, I don't know, man, but this is still a cool record. It's good. I paid five bucks for it. It was worth every penny of five bucks. I've seen it around for 12. I think 12 would be a little steep. Um, all right, here's a metal one for you all, or at least for me. I was pretty stoked to get my hands on a copy of this, too. This is one that Mr. Scott Waters uh, had been looking for for a while. And actually, I'm happy to say got before I found this, because otherwise it would have felt bad. But this is the uh, Overkill Fuck You EP, um, with the original uh, black uh, rapper, so that you're not horribly offended by this cover. Oh my god, look at that, it's a middle finger, oh shit, what are you going to do? You know what's funny? This is my this is my third Overkill record, and it's my third Overkill record with the song "Rotten to the Core" on it, which I find a little bit lame. But I also thought it was kind of cool. I didn't realize this back in the day. This is recorded at the Fantasy Theater in Cleveland. And I actually went to a lot of shows there when I was in high school. I saw Voiva there. I saw GBH, uh, Chromags, Destruction, uh, Testament. So it's kind of cool. Um, well, I got a copy of this, so mostly because it's cheap. Um, and actually, there's some, I have a leather press of this, and I actually like the Electro one better. And I have another copy of the Electro one, but it got a little bit fucked up. So it actually got mildewed along the way, and I was able to clean it up and kind of salvage it. But I could use what it sounds better. So you're not gonna. It's another thing. Fuck it, man. So we're talking about shit. I'm not gonna say very often. It's not very often you're gonna hear me say I really like this major label pressing more than I like the private pressing. But you know something, in this case, it's cool. I don't think the extra song, Stick to Your Guns, is particularly good. And, um, I just think the mix is cool on this. It sounds better on this one, so. I'm not gonna talk shit about my leather one, but, you know, it's the way it goes. I'll grab this thing. I actually have the private press of this one. This is Crisis, Hard as Rock. And this is the Metalworks one. And I actually haven't listened to this. Oh, there we go. Fucking lighting's kind of fucked up, like it always is in here, but you know, it's just the way we roll <laughs> in the metal theologian household. Um, yeah, I haven't listened to this forever. I remember liking it, don't really have any vivid memories. I have the other version of it with like the red and blue cover, so I, this is pretty cheap, so I figured what the hell I'll grab that. Um, that was in DC too. I got this one in Greenville, and uh, Greenville really. I keep talking about Greeno this video, but what can I say? It's sort of like Greeno had a pretty heavy hand in this one. I mean, because I wouldn't have found most of these if he hadn't been taking me to the right shops. So this one's been talked about by a couple people, though. I was glad to find a copy of it because it was seeming like it was drying up, and I kind of dicked around. But there it was in the wild, and at Cabin Floor Records. So I'm happy to patronize anyway. So I'll be getting my fix of like '70s obscuro shit. I think the only band on here I know is Medusa, uh, just because that record from the uh, Numero put out prior to this. But this is still sealed, I haven't even cracked it yet. So like, this horn shit is kind of corny, you know, but I can dig this anyway, man. It just doesn't really bother me. In fact, this is really, man, you know something? This is exactly the kind of shit that used to bug me in Fusion. Like, there's the fucking, like, soprano sax, like, With the kind of sort of honky color, kind of playing slowly. And then, like, the fucking bass going, wow, wow. And the fucking, um, the synth going, like, these little arpeggios. And that's, like, why I used to hate fusion. It's funny, man, that I can, like, listen to this now and, like, oh, I can kind of hang with this, you know? So, grab this one to replace the copy that I used to have that I'd gotten for a quarter. But let go of because I guess I only paid a quarter for it. Um, I remember thinking this record was okay, but not great. I'm gonna give it another chance. Um, but not the biggest Queen's Rack fan. I have no use for anything after this record, like Rage for Order and all that. I think it's fucking baloney. And uh, dude, even that picture, man, like that's a bad sound. Look at that. But you know, I'm gonna give this a listen and see how it goes. It does have a tarot card with fucking eyes shooting lasers on the cover or whatever it is so maybe it's tractor beams actually that's kind of what that looks like more than lasers so we'll see how that one goes here's another one that of course made me think of scott it's 
pretty stoked to find this, though. I'm aware of this band only because of Scott's hyping them, and they're a really good band. Definitely on the glam end of the spectrum for my taste. I mean, they're called Dirty Looks, right? But it's not like cornball shit. Like, the songs are good. Yeah, it's just fucking solid, man. I like the Dirty Looks, so I'm looking forward to hearing that one. All right, here's another one the Green or sort of semi taught me in the getting because I used to have this. I thought it was cornball back in the '80s, so eventually I got rid of it. And he was like, "Man, I really like that record. I don't care what anyone says." And I was like, "It's Dio, is a thing, right? I mean, what am I gonna do? Fucking get mad at this thing? I mean, look at those hands. See that dragon and all that shit. I mean, that's like what a fucking metal cover should look like, sort of, except." Like, for the scroll shit around the end, with the edge, with the Latin, it's like, mm. Yeah, um, so we'll see how I hang with, uh, the king of rock and roll today, and, uh, Sacred Heart, and rock and roll children. That's funny how many of these songs I actually remember, but, like, the beat of a heart, Hungry for Heaven, obviously. Rock and roll children, yeah, I don't know, man, we'll see. Give another crack. Okay, here's one that's neither metal nor jazz, but is an old friend that I hadn't seen in quite a while, and I was kind of grabby, happy to snag again. I used to have a few Van de Graaff Generator records. Then decided I hated Prague. Um, and then a few years after that, I was like, you know, I'm an asshole. I actually really like Prague, and if it's corny, well, whatever. If God wants me to fucking like Prague, then that's just how it works. So. I have a Commander Graph Generator record again, and it's a cool one too, it's an early one. This is one, I, uh, that was from DC too. This one I actually got in the mail just yesterday, pre-order. I was talking about jazz, right? So of course I got to show Sun Ra. This is brand new, I don't even know if the distros have it yet. I don't think Force Exposure's gotten this in yet, or uh, Dusty Groove, but I could be wrong. But this is a brand new one, Aurora Torio, it's a double. I just listened to it earlier and it blew me away. Like, if you dig that sort of like late 60s uh, Sun Ra sound, this is fucking awesome, man. It really is. It's uh, recorded in Philadelphia. I think it was a show. But, uh, yeah, lots of drums. Lots of long sections with just different, like a variety of drums playing. Lots of keyboards. Not a lot of shit like the Moog solos that he started doing later in the 70s. But a lot of the shit where he's playing like an electric piano or something and accompanied by like five drummers and shit. I just a lot of the kind of shit I really dig out of Sun Ra, man, so. There we go. Um, here's another one I got at a different place. Uh, actually, not in D.C., but outside of D.C. With uh, Mr. Green. Oh, it's a jazz one. Japan Sweet, which I wasn't familiar with. And here, what was I saying about Trio Records before? But when the trio is Mal Waldron, and I don't remember who the other guys are, and I kind of go, mm, you know, and like, or if, like it's Bill Evans and... Uh, you know, Scott LaFaro and Paul Motion. It's like, it's a great trio, man. But I already have like eight records by them. But if it's Paul Blay and Gary Peacock and Barry Altschul, I'll go, you know. And fucking one long track, Broken Into Two Sides. I hadn't heard this. So actually, it's a quick sample. And I listened to it since I've been home. But I pretty much got one over right away because it's a lot of uh, like electronic shit. A lot of, it's funny, it's like the kind of free playing the kind of free bass playing that I was kind of just cracking on with the um, fusion shit. But it's like in the... I don't know, it just works better in this paradigm, you know? I mean, I just said I like the fusion shit too, but it doesn't sound cornball. It sounds like this is sort of how we're playing. This is sort of the expression in the context of the record. So, uh, yeah, I really dug this. 77, it's on Improvising Artists, which is Paul Blaze label. So, um... Pretty stoked to have gotten my hands on that bad boy. This is another DC find. It's not the greatest thing ever, frankly, but I was surprised to see an Argentine jazz record in the wild, so I had to grab this one. I actually been trying to get a reissue of this that it dried up. So uh, Alberto Favero, the a Coltrane tribute and movements with like sort of a small like jazz orchestra, but ends up sounding a lot more sort of like the. Uh, you know, that, like, spiritual sound that Coltrane was doing later. I mean, you know, people are doing Coltrane tributes. They're generally going for that Love Supreme sound, right? I mean, they're not really doing... They're, they're not doing Blue Train, even though people talk about Blue Train. But they're sure as hell not doing Ascension. You know, it's usually about that Love Supreme. 
things. This is kind of, it's kind of what this is doing, but it doesn't come off as corny or contrived particularly. Um, you know, it's a perfectly enjoyable record, and I'll probably keep it forever. Speaking of perfectly enjoyable records, and fusion, and corny shit, and um, shit I got with Greeno. Fucking, it all comes together in this record right here, which I was afraid would really suck because it's on CTI, and let's face it, a lot of CTI records suck. In fact, I... Someone was asking about CTI recently, so I was having a conversation with them. I was like, don't fucking buy my CTI, because about, you have about an 80% chance of buying a turd. I mean, fuck. Most of these records are just fucking bullshit records. Now, this one is an early 70s one. Joe Farrell's records I've become really fond of. I haven't heard them all, but the ones I've heard are like cool, like funky jazz. Emphasis on the jazz, but like with sort of a funky, like kind of soul jazz feel, but without being overly like whatever. And with Elvin Jones, Chick Corea, and Buster Williams, this is a really cool record, man. And I'd actually heard a piece of this, one of the tunes off this is from a soundtrack. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if this is the one I want to be going for, because the one that I really want is the one with like, I can't describe it, I'll get it one of these days and show it off. But, what's the song? I want to say it's Outback. It's like from a soundtrack, and then it says arranged and conducted by Joe Farrell. I'm like, ooh, it's a couple of bad signs. I really hope it doesn't suck. But thank God, this record not only did not suck, but it was very good. And so it joins a very small group of CTI records that I'll really fucking cherish, honestly. Let me go flip this fucking record. Speaking of shit that I cherish, and then we'll get back to it. This fucking camera. Oh, I know why it's bouncing. It's because of how I have it set up. All right, here's another one I got with Green. Oh, this is a uh, Dollar Brand. Anatomy of a South African Village. And that sounds a lot more pretentious than it really is, given that Dollar Brand is actually from South Africa. But Abdullah Ibrahim. Well, if you know who Dollar Brand is, you know that he's Abdullah Ibrahim, so I probably shouldn't even bother saying that. Um, this is an actual Freedom import label thing. Um... Most of the Freedom records that I've come across in the wild here have been um, the Arista reissues, which they kind of rejiggered so as to make them look like shit. This one has one of these Polydor labels. And, uh, you know, again, I'm talking shit about Trio Records and when I find a bunch of Trio Records. This is a really cool one, though. It has a lot of really free playing on it. Um, a lot more than I expected, especially since the only other dollar brand record I have is... Um, like 75 and a lot more sort of in like a soul jazz kind of funky vein. Also a very good record. I dropped the name of it, but I'm spacing right now because uh, I got it when I was kind of on a metal kick and kind of filed it away before I gave it a stew. So I'll bust it out soon though to show it. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this record, man. It's just a fucking cool piece. Um, again, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the greatest thing of all time. It's not the second coming of Cecil Taylor, but um, it's really cool. Um, alright, I think the rest are all from Greenville. Alright, speaking of those funky ones here, I'm going to move ahead to these two. Alright, Sonny Stitt made a lot of crap records. Made a lot of, actually made a lot of really enjoyable records. But he made a lot of mediocre records. I probably have half a dozen Sonny Stitt records. that are like, you know, like post Four Brothers, I think he was. I'm not sure which big, whose band he was in. But, and fucking Sonny Stitt was an old motherfucker by 1970. You know? So... These are 70s records. These got up in the 60s. But I had heard this one and fucking loved it. Black Vibrations it was actually the guy at the uh, Groove Merchant in San Francisco who turned me on to this. Um, so I was looking for other ones that sounded similar, which is why I bought as many Sonny Stitt records as I have. And eventually I figured out the reason this one was so good was not Sonny Stitt, it was actually Leon Spencer. Now, it's Leon Spencer, Don Patterson's on here, so that's a good sign, but Leon Spencer, Melvin Sparks, and Idris Muhammad, okay? 
Same rhythm section on this one with Virgil Jones too. Oh, and guess what? This record's fucking great too. And these are both beautiful. I got these from the same dude in Greenville at um, fucking Cabin Floor. And if you've ever heard some shit by Sonny Stitt, been like, man, that's some really good like fucking soul jazz shit with a little bit of a funky edge, but you know, very much jazz record. It's not like you know funkadelic, but like just kind of that sort of vibe going a little bit. You can't fucking find him because you keep buying one clunker after another. The secret is Leon Spencer. Take my word for it. And Leon Spencer's solo record's all great, too, if you like that kind of shit. Stoked to have gripped these. Um, this was actually a double. Uh, I might do something with a double, but I haven't decided yet. So. Um... What else do I have? Here's another one. I only have one other Idris Muhammad record. I just got this one while I was up there. I'd never seen this before. Don't know anything about it. And quite honestly, other than the fact that it's early and on Prestige, it's like 71 and on Prestige, I still don't because this motherfucker is sealed. Look at that. So I've kind of been basking in having a fucking sealed record that's as old as me, you know? But it's going to get cracked, because uh, the one that I have I really like. Um, and I meant to check the name of it, because I want to talk about it in this video. And I fucking forgot to before I started it. But it's the one that uh, Beat Goes Public uh, reissued to the Ace of City. Yeah, that's what I got. And on the cover, he's sort of playing the drums, like he's wearing his cap. He's sort of making a face like this. Like, like with his beard and shit. Actually, it'd be like this. And it's kind of a weird looking picture of him. And he does the James Brown cover on there, too, which is a little bit weird, but... It's a really cool record, though, man. I like that fucking thing a lot. So I was happy to find that one. And for a very fair price, too. This one, I had never seen before. I kind of couldn't believe this even existed. So the Prestige record with Archie Shep and Philly Joe Jones, which is already kind of a weird combination. You see how fucking the setup, like if I fucking bounce my knee like this, like I do when I'm starting to spaz out, look what happens to the camera, man. It's weird. I should have been using the force or something like that. That'd be some weird shit. Hang on. Watch this shit. Oh, fuck. Look at that. I'm making all this shit happen by using my mind. It's your fucking brain, dude. Holy shit. Look. You're going to astral project soon. You better turn the video off right now or else you're fucking... It's going to be like scanners, man. Your fucking head's going to explode. So... Yeah, so it's Philly, Archie Shep with Philly Joe Joes. It's already a weird combination. Leroy Jenkins. Remember what I said about violin earlier? But it's Leroy Jenkins. You know what I mean? One of the fucking Chicago crew. Earl Freeman on bass. And Anthony Braxton playing with them. I mean, that's him right there, man. So this is a very free-sounding record. I mean, more than a lot of what Archie Shep did. And um, it's very... Um, It's a very kind of screamy sort of record. I don't so much mean that as far as like the horn screaming, like kind of Pharaoh Sanders whole gimmick. Oh, there's plenty of that on here. It's almost more like, um, it's just like an exuberant record in that sort of a way. And it somehow sounds really militant without being confrontational, which is a, a weird thing to say, but especially on an Archie Shep record, right? But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's funny. I just found that one really sort of intense, but really listenable at the same time. So I only played it like once or twice, so I'm still absorbing that one. But, um, first impression was that's a really special record. And finally, speaking of special records, I was really fucking happy to get a copy of this. Iron Man by Eric Dolphy. This is a fucking Douglas record. Let's see who's on here? Clifford Jordan, Prince Lachey, Bobby Hutcherson, called Robert Hutcherson on Vibes. And, um, yeah, I mean, this record, I don't think this came out while he was alive. Yeah, it says it was cut in early 64, and he died later that same year. And, um, this stuff wasn't released. And it's definitely, um, more in the direction of, like, the Out to Lunch stuff. I've only played this once, I haven't completely digested this shit. Sort of like I warned at the beginning, but check out that old ass Douglas label, man. That's some good shit. 
And I got this for a very fair price. It wasn't cheap, but it was a very fair price. I've got nothing to bitch about. And, um, yeah, man, I'm fucking, Eric Dolph, he's just fucking fantastic. Anyway, if you watch my videos for a while, you know that I'm a pretty big fan. You know, maybe not the same level as, say, Sun Ra, but there also just isn't the fucking volume of shit. Uh, he was a little spotty, too. I don't like the shit he was doing with, like, Booker Little and that. Eric Dolphy actually did some records I don't care for. But when Eric Dolphy was really, like, in his groove, like, on this record, or Outward Bound, and, uh, that one, man, Eric Dolphy could hang with the fucking best stuff. And, you know, don't take my word for it. Take John Coltrane's word for it, right? All right, so that's what I've got today. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this video wasn't, like, a fucking 40-minute epic. But you know something? If it was... So be it. So, uh, always a pleasure. Um, God damn, excuse me. I think that was my first burp this video, man. It's almost not a complete video if I don't burp at it at some point. It's like fucking soda, man. It's... All right, see you next time. Thanks.